White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, is the most celebrated of the historic watering places around which much of the history of fashionable Southern society has revolved since the country was young. Though today White Sulphur is seldom thought of as a health resort, it was the curative properties of the spring water which gave the place its tremendous vogue throughout the last century. To be seen at Old White during the season was a social obligation few of the South's men and women of fashion felt able to ignore. Everyone who was anyone in those days flocked there annually to take the cure and to join in the smart life of the hotel which grew up around the springs. Guests of the Greenbrier Hotel today are frequently lodged in the old cottages, many of them dating from 150 years ago, which have housed such celebrated historical figures as Clay, Calhoun, and the great Robert E. Lee. Thirteen presidents of the United States have also stayed there. It was at White Sulphur almost a century ago that the governor of North Carolina made his immortal remark to the governor of South Carolina. It's a long time between drinks. And here the mint julep, one of the famed contributions of the South to good living, was invented and brought to full perfection. In the smart world of today, among people whose doings are reported and photographed, the Greenbrier Hotel still occupies a unique position. Its gala reopening after several war years during which it had been taken over by the government, was an event which made social news and focused attention once more on the little village in the West Virginia Hills. From the trim little station at White Sulphur to the Greenbrier Hotel is only a short distance, but all the trains are met by an antique, though spotlessly polished coat, maintained by the hotel in memory of the days when any purposeful exertion was considered unbecoming a gentleman or his lady. Since the war, the Greenbrier has been redone inside and out and has emerged as one of the handsomest resorts in the Western Hemisphere. The reconversion was the work of one of America's most widely known decorators, Dorothy Draper, whose designs are marked by the bold use of massed color. Though Greenbrier's decorative scheme is new, its clientele remains basically much what it has always been. Travel people of means and background, industrialists and bankers, and well-known public figures like Clark Clifford, White House confidant and advisor during most of the Truman administration. But for all the elegance indoors, life at Greenbrier goes on mostly outdoors. Since the hotel grounds are some 7,000 acres in area, there's plenty of room for everyone and for every open-air pursuit. In the daytime, most activities center around the casino, a deluxe country club the hotel maintains just for its guests. There are six clay courts built for championship tennis, where any enthusiastic weekenders who want to can perfect their backhand stroke. And there are acres of porch and terrace, where those whose interest in the sporting life is more academic can work up a becoming tan while watching Prince Alexander Hohenlohe and some of his friends run through a few fast sets of mixed doubles. These days, Greenbrier appears so often in the glossier magazines as a background for notables that it is taking on some of the familiarity of a national landmark. A sunny day may find Jerome Zerbe snapping Mrs. Igor Cassini. Or a lineup of newsreel and still cameramen concentrating on such eminent personalities as J. Arthur Rank, famed British film magnate, His Royal Highness the Duke of Windsor, and former Senator Burton K. Wheeler of Montana. While the Duchess of Windsor and Miss Grace Amory watch from the sidelines. Among those who may be found basking in the sun at Greenbrier are such socially prominent personalities as Mrs. Dolly Dorellis and John Jacob Astor III, Ottavio Prochet and Mrs. Byron C. Foy. 
frequent visitors as well are the Winston Guests and Michael Phipps, the John Sims Kellys and Mrs. Fulton Cutting Jr. In the tournaments at Greenbrier are many of the great names of golf. But there are equally well-known personalities in the gallery. Mrs. Lucille Vanderbilt and Mrs. Nicholas DuPont may be found in one of the many groups of spectators. And there are scores of others whose names make frequent copy for newspaper columnists. At Greenbrier tournaments, there is almost always a large and faithful following right around the 18 holes, especially when the foursome includes Bing Crosby and golfers Chris Dunphy and Ben Hogan. For the audience is reasonably certain that when Bing is in good form, something is sure to happen sooner or later that will make the trip well worthwhile. Though he is only an amateur at golf, Bing is a professional at low comedy whose antics add immeasurably to the fun at Greenbrier. Back at the hotel as the afternoon ends, the day's big push begins for most of the staff. At the Greenbrier, dinner is looked upon as an occasion, not just a routine operation. It is handled like the important and pleasant part of civilized existence that it can and should be. On Saturday nights, the dining room is in top form with every woman wearing her smartest gown and her most treasured jewels. At the next table may be the John Jacob Astors and their guests. Climax of the weekend is the Saturday Night Ball, held in the Greenbrier's elegantly decorated Rose Ballroom. Glistening with crystal and gilt, lit in a subdued key to give every woman the agreeable feeling that she looks her best, it is one of the most beautiful ballrooms in the country and a perfect background for a Strauss waltz danced by the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. There are always a few tireless dancers who keep things going until the last possible moment and by the time the ball is over, it is invariably close to dawn. For weekenders, Sunday is departure time, a time which comes all too soon. But hotel records show that few Greenbrier guests ever spend but a single weekend at White Sulphur. For one weekend has a way of leading to another, and the trains that take guests away seem always to bring them back sooner or later, to the green and lovely lawns, to the leafy hills, and the clear warm sky of old white.